It is Wednesday, August 17th in the MLB, and I'm Austin from calling our shot. And I'm Morgan from calling our shot. And we are back with our three best picks of the day. We've got a favorite game pick, player prop, no one first inning, coming your guys' way. As always, guys, I need you to do us a favor. Go down, mash that subscribe button, especially if you already, already aren't subbed. really helps Austin and I grow this channel. And we're going to recap yesterday, a back-to-back -back winning days. Pretty solid. Dodgers, Brewers, No, uh, we had the over eight runs in that one. You didn't have to sweat that one out. You had, what, 11 innings. Eh, don't worry about that one. Twins actually was a no-sweat bet. They easily cover that. Grinky gives up a couple runs. Gray pitches a gem. And then the Angels, Mariners, no one first inning. This was my face when I watched it live. Because, yeah, it was absolutely brutal. Rengifo hits a home run. We had two strikes on him. He was the final out, and he hits a home run. In fact, only nine home runs on the year. And two of them have ruined our no one first innings. Absolutely brutal. But, you know, we're going to keep getting into it. If you've been enjoying our fantasy football content, we got another video coming your guys' way. Ten rookies to keep your eye on in fantasy football. Should we post it later on this afternoon. Hopefully you want to check it out. Turn on those notifications on the channel. We appreciate you guys as always for tuning in. Logan, what do you got for the people today? Good call yesterday. Yeah, we got a, we got a good call on, on the total. And we're going back to a total this one, right? We're going to the Rays versus Yankees game. I'm taking the over eight total runs. Minus 110 odds on DraftKings is currently your best value, but it's a total. So, you know, it's mostly the same across the book. I actually watched it drop from eight and a half on, on FanDuel to eight right before recording. And, I, and I'm doing some line reading, as I did yesterday, and, and we cashed that total. The total set high for these, these teams. 67% is on the under uh, at the time we're recording this video because it makes sense, right? It's the easy pick. You know, you, you've watched what these two teams have done. You just go under and, and you don't think twice but both these games in the series as, as i mentioned have failed to score over four runs yankees haven't hit this over themselves since august 8th so if you've been you know mashing unders and yankees games you've been really profitable recently but i think the tide kind of changes today right now in, in august you look at these these teams and and i again i'm, I'm kind of doing some uh some anti-line reading like why why is the, why is the line so high right yankees 23rd no ps you know, Tampa Bay 28th in OPS in, in August, and yet they've got this total set to eight. Like, it's got to be for a reason, right? And Domingo Herman has actually been good recently. One earned run allowed in, his, in each of his last two starts. But you got you to gotta pull back his stats, right? Her Herman, uh, three walks allowed in his last home start. He sometimes has control issues. It's just one of those you got to watch him to, to understand. But sometimes he just really can't find the strike zone. Hopefully Tampa Bay, who is eighth and walks drawn on the road, hopefully they can put their bat on the shoulder and not swing at some pitches outside of the zone. And they, will, they should have some base running opportunities versus Herman, right? And, uh, and I pulled, obviously, their, their, their splits versus Herman. Randy Arozarena, right? Two for five with a home run. He's already had a home run in this series. Uh, and, and Diaz, three for 11 with a home run. So if, if Ramon, you know, is is losing control, putting runners on base, and, and he throws bad pitches, the Rays do know what to do with those bad pitches. Put them in the seats, Rays, for us today. Now we got Corey Kluber, you know, going for, for the Rays today. Six innings pitch, zero earned runs, and six innings pitch, one earned run versus the Yankees in his two starts this year. So again, you're just so tempted to take the under because of what they've done. What and the tra the trajectory that they've been going, but look, the final score of those games, two to nothing, three to one. Yeah, no sweat bet, Logan, on on the under today. But look at what Corey Kluber's done in his last three starts. It's it's not pretty. Seven, three, and four in runs. He's got a seven point one three ERA and a one point four seven WHIP in those last three starts. Those are extremely high numbers. Look, I, I know the Yankees have been struggling, and I, and I and that's well documented. You got people in Yankee Stadium giving each other haircuts in the stands because they're so bored of watching their baseball team. But all this this said, Yankees still six in OPS at home, third in runs scored at home. This is an offense that that can come alive. You don't bet Yan unders in Yankee Stadium with confidence because you know the dimensions of that stadium. They can easily you know hit two or three home runs in a game. Yankees also, you know, second in bullpen ERA, Tampa Bay seventh in bullpen ERA. But did that matter yesterday, you know, with the Dodgers bullpen yesterday? Like the Dodgers have one of the best bullpens. The, the, the telecast kept talking about how good they are and how they haven't allowed any hits. Yeah, well, their bullpen sold them in that game. So I'm just saying the 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 over the over is the play for me in this one. It's kind of, you know, fading all logic and, and fading, you know, the lines. But I really do love the over in this play. So that's why I'm going to go ahead and go with that one. But Austin, what do we got for the day? Yeah, so we're going to a player prop today. Yesterday we had a game pick. Today we have a player prop. You could kind of turn it into a game pick if you wanted to, and I'll talk about it. I'm going Mike Clevenger of the Padres, under two and a half earned runs. Now, 
this one, obviously, Clevenger is going to go up against the Marlins today. And my favorite pivot would probably be taking the Padres' first five money line or taking the under three and a half runs in the first five. That's at plus 305. It is plus 105. Um, now, the the Marlins will trot out Pablo Lopez. I just don't love trusting Pablo Lopez personally. But let's talk with Clevenger while we're on this one. 3.47 ERA, 1.14 whip this year. Pretty solid, Mike. Been pretty consistent at home versus the road. Unlike Grinky yesterday, where we said, you know, his road splits are terrible. You look at Clevenger, more or less the same pitcher at home and on the road. Now, today, you look at the lineup that the Marlins will likely try out. Obviously, we record these videos so early, so not exactly going to know the lineup the Marlins will have out there, but should have roughly six righties in it, maybe only a couple lefties. Now, that's good for us because Clevenger uh, does pretty well versus righties, just a 207 batting average, but Clevenger allowed only nine home runs this year. Eight of them have come to lefties, only one to a righty. So if he can hold down those six righties from hitting home runs, it makes the Marlins have to get on base, get multiple hits to score runs. I'm fine with that. The three lefties, he's going to see that, you know, he's giving up more home runs too, which eight, honestly, is not a lot. He's going to face Wendell, Blade, and Diaz. All these guys don't really have a lot of home runs to their name this year. I think Wendell only has two home runs and like 400 plate appearances. Bled Day has, I think, three home runs and over 200 plate appearances. So I do think Clevenger can hold them from hitting home runs, making them hit, get actual hits. And this Marlins offense, obviously, we know has been struggling. Now, Clevenger is under two and a half earned runs in 10 of his last 13 starts. So have been pretty solid. His three misses, I would categorize as good misses because they've been at the Colorado Rockies in Coors Field at the Dodgers, and then versus the Mariners, which the Mariners are a good offense on some days. Now, over the last two weeks, Marlins batting 226 versus right-handed pitchers. Clevenger obviously is a righty, which is seventh worst in the MLB. And 17 of the last 25 right-handed starting pitchers have stayed under this two-and-a-half earned runs versus the Marlins. Marlins also never seen Clevenger. They don't really know exactly what pitches he's going to be throwing unless they do a, a ton of uh, a ton of research, which the Marlins really don't have a lot to compete for this day and age in the MLB season. So who knows how much they're going to be looking at Clevenger's pitching splits. And also, Padres trying to avoid a sweep by the Marlins. Yes, the Marlins have won the first two games of this series. So I think Clevenger comes out here as a pretty good showing. He'll probably throw five, six innings pitch. So taking his under two and a half earned runs, minus 129 on Caesars. I take it up to roughly minus 140. Should become more juiced as the day goes on. Another one I did consider, and we've been fading this team for a while, Tyler Malley of the Minnesota Twins, under two and a half earned runs versus the Royals. Like Obviously, we took this uh, bet for um uh joe ryan a couple days ago then we backed the twins with sunny gray on the mound so i think malley has a good chance i just don't love betting on uh, tyler so i'm not going to bet him today my only pick of the day will be mike clevenger under two and a half earned runs but i believe people we need to bounce back we need the music we need the music more than ever because it's nerfy nation time grab those flags wave them because these flags were down bad yesterday but you know what we're changing the tide today we got a good one for the people i won't even give you guys a lean that we like to at the end we're going to go to this Tigers Guardians game and take the no one first inning, minus 105 on BetMGM. Getting pretty solid value to wrap up the slate. Now, on the mound for the Guardians will be Cal Quantrell, 19 and 3 on Nerfies this year, been one of the better pitchers that the MLB has to offer. And two of those 19 wins came against the Tigers. He's 2 0 on Nerfies versus them. We know the Tigers, not the greatest offense, although they have been scoring some runs in this series versus this Guardians team, as they always apparently somehow managed to do, but still 27th in first inning runs. Not the greatest offense. So I think Quantrell can get me three outs. Who's on the mound for the Tigers today, Logan? Yeah, we've got Norris going for, for the Tigers, right? Now, limited sample size, we know. 2-0 and on, on Nerfies this year. He's only started two games. but So he's normally a bullpen guy. But if you look at his last start, right? Four four and two-thirds innings pitch, zero on runs versus the White Sox. That's a pretty solid showing, right? Now, we're, we're not asking for, for all that. What I'm asking for is is, is three outs, and I, and I think he should be able to do that. Now, Cleveland is 10th in first inning runs. We know the, the Cleveland Guardians are an annoying team in the first inning. That's just how it is. We don't pick a ton of Cleveland nerfies, but if you look at the slate, I mean, this one is sort of my favorite because I could see Cleveland you know starting a little bit slow in this one. The over-under set to eight, as it normally is between these teams, it's it's usually a close, uh, sort of a slugfest type game. So I, I really do love this one for the nerfie. Um, and hopefully, hopefully you can bounce back because uh, Luis, what's what's the opposite of a COS Hall of Famer? Because whatever that is, uh, Luis Rangifo uh, is is an anti COS Hall of Famer. He doesn't want to see us bring out the brooms. He doesn't want to see Nerfy Nation succeed. I, I don't know what that is. Yeah, he 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 demoralized me going to bed, but that's okay. So hopefully tonight we can go go to bed happy. All right, we did consider the Diamondbacks versus Giants. No one first inning. I think that's a pretty solid one. Didn't really want to trust Zach Davies, but Carlos Rodon should be able to get his three outs. Just comes 
goes down to Davies getting his three, which he should be able to do against uh, as a righty against the Giants. But we're going to go with that Tigers Guardians one as a little bit better. Let us know your favorite Nerfy down below in the comments. Maybe we'll tell you guys. Now, parlay of the daytime, it's going to be a good one. We got actually an over and an under split. We're going to be taking the over in the uh, – trying to remember uh, which one I picked. Cardinals. Uh, Cardinals. Over in the Cardinals Rockies game, I forgot to put the note on here. They're taking the under in that Diamondbacks Giants game, which is seven runs. The over in the Rockies game is seven and a half. So hopefully you guys tell that. Check out our odds jam parlay. It's going to be linked in the description. Appreciate you guys as always. Check out those fantasy football videos as they come out. Appreciate you guys, Austin Logan. We're signing out.